we have a classic Ferrari to polish. I'm Ivan. I'm Jason. This is DIY Detail. Today, we're going to be polishing this beautiful Testarossa to make it even better, because it's going to auction soon. We want to get this old single stage paint looking as good as it possibly can without removing a lot of paint. And what we understand, this is all original car. Right. So we want to keep as much original as possible. Right. Original is only original once. Exactly. And in doing so, what we're going to be doing is just a light enhancement polish. Yep. We're not going after defects. We're not trying to make it perfect. We're trying to make it beautiful. And with that, we're going to use the DIY rotaries. Jason's going to use a 5-inch pad. I'm going to use a 6-inch. It all comes down to preference. And the rotary comes with both a 5- and 6-inch backing plate. So whichever one you prefer, you have it in stock. Great. Yeah. So why do you prefer a 5-inch pad? I just like, I, I can maneuver a little bit better okay. in a small area, and I just feel a little more comfortable. No rhyme or reason. Yeah. Um, I've used 6-inch pad. I've used 10-inch pads, 11-inch pads. Yeah. All the gamut. You know, exactly. 1-inch pads. Yeah. I just keep on going back to a 5-inch for whatever reason. It's just a little more comfortable. For right. Me. And a little less drag as well. Yep. Yeah. Good. I prefer 6-inch because efficiency. But anyways, let's start. Let's go. So as we mentioned, this car is single-stage paint, and by single-stage paint, paint, it means that we're starting with a red pad, but if we had a different color pad, it would go red almost immediately. Yep. And that freaks a lot of people out. Yes, and when we're wiping off the polish residue, it's going to be red as well. So don't freak out. But that is exactly the same thing that's happening with clear coat. But people don't realize how much material they're taking off with the clear coat. Yeah. Now, a single stage is a little softer than clear coat, so you are removing a little more material. Yep. But on clear coat, you're still removing that material. You just don't see it. You just don't see it. Yeah. yeah. And if you start seeing color when you're removing clear coat, then you have a really big problem. Yeah. Paint shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So off we go. Talk about edge work. What are you thinking about as you're? I'm just being very careful and cognizant of, of both edges at the same time. Just real light pressure. Just being real mindful of what we're working with. If it was rubber, I would stay off of it. This is painted right here. So just being cautious. And one thing you may have noticed is both Jason and I were going in straight lines. Cross hatching is something I always teach to someone just starting. But in reality, as long as you're getting the coverage and as long as you know where you've been and where you're going, you don't really need that cross hatching. No, I, I've never been a cross hatcher. Um, just for the simple fact that I, I really pay attention to for, for what I'm doing. Yeah. And if I cross hatch, what I've noticed um, with a lot of students is that they're more focused on the cross hatch than actually what they're doing. Exactly. So. But if you want to cross hatch, more power to you. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing right with it. It's just a different way. And we're coming up with great shine. And like we mentioned, take a look at the towel. It's nice and red now. Which is not a problem, it's not a concern. And the pad as well, we have a lot of red on it. So let's bring it over to the pad washer and you'll be able to see just how much is coming out of this pad. So we can see all the accumulation of red and we have a bit of black on the pad as well from going over the moldings. And here we go, and the pad washer. Brand new pad again. Ready to polish. So, a lot of times, if you don't film yourself, a lot of times you really don't know where the pad is. Um, a lot of times the pad is over here when you're trying to polish somewhere in here. So by coming down and using that spindle as your guide, 
Your spindle is right here. I give it a little bit of tilt. I hold onto the machine with the lock on, and that way I'm in a lot of control. And I'm polishing right where I want to polish. And that, that is really key. Uh, you know, it takes experience to know where you're polishing at. And, and it becomes a point where you don't even think about it. But I see a lot of newbies, and myself, if I'm not paying attention, polishing in an area where I really don't want to polish. As long as the spindle's on this side of the edge, if it's far over in this area, you're basically polishing over here. So if you look at the pattern that Jason has established in the paint there, just by putting the pad down, you see that on the headlight, we still have the polishing pattern, and on the hood, we simply have the, the pattern of the pad yeah. where it wasn't spinning. So you can see where he was putting pressure and where he wasn't. And if you were working the machine, it would be the same. You would have the, the polish exactly where he wants it on the edge of the hood without touching the headlight. So adding a bit of tilt helps. Now he's not tilting it on a no. 45 degree angle, he just has a very small amount of tilt, yep. enough to release the pressure on that headlight. Yep, exactly. So if you want to film here, Nick, if I, if I started out here, and I kind of baby, I hold it like a baby, I, I just have a little bit of tilt, not much, now I'm completely flat. And then you can also tilt it just ever so slightly. And I'm actually picking up on the machine and just literally guiding the tool. So as I come down here, if I give it a slight bit of tilt, I have a lot of control. With the rotary, you know, whether myself or Jason, it doesn't matter, we can literally polish right up to the edge of this emblem, even in this little divot, without touching the emblem. Yeah. But in this case, we know it's an enameled emblem, so it has enamel over it, so I lightly polished the emblem as well while I was there. Yeah. Have you ever had issues with emblems? Uh, so, uh, Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the early 2000 Mercedes Benz, if you polish them, you end up with a completely silver emblem, yeah. all the blue comes out of it. Yep. You know that by experience, I take Yes. It. Or you've exactly. seen it. Yeah. I've Mercedes. seen it, I've had my employees do it. Yeah. Uh, so we created a silver edition SLS for a dealership once. Oh wow, nice, yeah. very nice. I bet they were pleased. Uh, they never noticed. Oh good, even better. Yeah, yeah. We well, actually I pointed it out to them and they said, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's a used car. That's good. good. Yeah. What's your philosophy on wiping off polish? How do you normally do it? I normally actually use a, a rinse -less wash of product I always have. Yep. Um, no reason why, but I've noticed it is a little bit easier to do. Um, and some paints can be a little bit sticky and polish can be a little bit sticky, different climates. So yeah, I've, I've always been a fan of that method. Yeah, the, the rinseless wash, the surfactants in it break down the polish oils, making it a lot easier to wipe sure. off. Yeah. And you're not putting as much pressure on the, the surface, therefore you're reducing the opportunity to have micro marring from your towels. Plus you're also cleaning the surface, so you're kind of doing two things at once. Yeah. following the curves, I'm actually picking up the weight off the machine and just applying not even any pressure. I'm just barely letting the pad contact the surface. So when you come into an area down here, you just kind of float with that area. Now one thing back here, we have all these grates and what we can do with these grates, a lot of people will try to get a little half inch polisher and a little one inch polisher here. We don't need that. With a six inch polisher and the waffle, I'm actually able to get polish right down to here. So I have the polish there without any issues whatsoever. And this beautiful Ferrari badge, same thing. So 
I can polish in and around this Ferrari badge quite simply without moving it, without damaging it, and we end up with a nice clean surface when we wipe it off. Go slow. Um, let the machine, it's very, it's a soothing feel. It's very comfortable. You just have to kind of go with the curve. If you're fighting the machine, something's wrong, and it, it could be your body mechanic. Um, but it, as long as you just kind of dance with the polisher, and they're nice and super smooth, it'll do what it needs to do. You, all we're trying to do is just guide it, that's all. You just go slow and smooth and have fun with it. I like single stage. It's, it's, um, it's a true dark, deep color that I don't think clear coat can give you, uh, in my opinion. And it, it just looks pretty satisfying when it's done. Obviously, Ferrari is just a little more careful, uh, knowing that some of these parts we can't get or find. Um, you know, the risk to reward is a lot higher on something like this. So just, you know, you can't be scared, but you just have to be cautious. And, you know, make every pass count. And, you know, on a car like this, we all want perfection, but we don't know what this car has seen through the years. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. So, you know, it's it's a lot of risk to reward, and uh, just being on the safe side is uh, it's something that I would err on the side of caution on, on this type of vehicle. Yeah, and a car like this, if we're forced to repaint, we've devalued the car dramatically. Uh, whereas, if it's the original paint, we're here to preserve. We're not here to perfect. If the customer said, hey, I want this car to be perfect, it's a, you know, 100, 150 hours of wet sanding, polishing, and we might blow through the paint. Paint on classic Ferraris isn't exactly great from the factory, never mind after 30 years of who knows what has happened to it. We don't know how many times this has been polished. We don't know how many times it's been waxed, how it's been taken care of. So we're taking a very low and slow approach to making sure we're not inflicting any damage. All we're doing is increasing gloss. Yeah, and I have been that guy where I have made those mistakes. Um, right. Unfortunately, that is my job title a lot of times. So yeah. um, that's just the risk that I have to assume yeah but when people hire you they know that going in yeah that they're wanting perfection you're one of the only people in the world that can attain that or as yeah. close to perfection as you can get try to yeah yeah exactly yeah. and with that you know there's that risk going in and they know that if you burn through a panel searching what they're looking for yeah then they have to assume that risk. Yeah, but on a car like this, I would do, uh, you know, I would spend, you know, a little more time on it if we could, but sometimes we can't. No, so exactly. So you have, um, you have to figure out the parameters of what you're working with, yeah. what the budget is, and really what the time is. Yeah, so and you have those three things to work with. Right, and this car is going to auction soon. Yeah. So when it's at auction, let's say we were to burn through this corner here, and they have to repaint this whole rear quarter, that might delay it getting yeah. to the auction. Yeah. So we don't want to take that risk. We don't want to take that, you know, that dilemma of, hey, finding a body shop that will work on this, yeah. finding a body shop that will do a good enough job that you can't tell the difference, uh, that you can't tell it's been repainted, that takes a lot of effort, time, and money. Uh, and it's something we don't want to take that risk. Like Kenny Rogers says, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jason, yes. why do you think people are afraid of the rotary? 
Well, you know, all the horror stories of back in the day of, you know, Grandpa using the big old uh, Sioux buffer that weighed 90, you know, 1,000 pounds yeah. using it. And, you know, it's just, it comes down to everything. It's, it's balance and procedure and body mechanics. I think if you can control your body mechanics and just be real smooth, yeah, um, you can do it. And I, I proved that fact. In some of my trainings, I just people are fighting, and I'm like, close your eyes. Yeah. Close your eyes, take that out of the equation, and then your body mechanics automatically smooth out. Yeah, you have no choice because yeah. now you're relying on your other senses. Yeah, you have to, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, when, once once people use the rotor and feel comfortable with it, they're like, why haven't I used it more? Yeah. And does a rotary cause swirls? Uh, I've seen it in the improper use, yes, but if you do it like we did on this thing, the, the likely of swirls is next to none. Yeah, so you know, a rotary, I've always said it's not, the, it's not the rotary that causes the swirls, it's the person holding the rotary that causes the swirls. Now, if you have a dirty pad, obviously, yeah. uh, or you pick up a piece of dirt over an edge or something, then yeah, you, you can... But it's not the tool or the pad. If it's if it's clean, if everything is equal and clean, yeah, like it should be, and you take your time, then with all things considering, it, it should look. You should have still really good results. I I enjoy using a rotary. I really do. With that, Jason, thank you for joining us. Thank you for bringing me. Yeah, it's great. Fun. Yeah, you know, done a great job on this car. We finished it with a rotary. Amazing. It can be done okay. even if you have just, you know, 20 years of experience like Jason. Yeah. Yeah. 24, 25. 24, I think. Yeah. 25. Yeah. yeah we're, exactly. We're getting up there. You're getting up there, but uh, you still have a few years to catch up to me. Yeah. yeah. But uh, with that, thanks for joining us. If you want to find out, if you want to discover Jason's world, go to Jason Kilmer on Instagram. You'll see all the wonderful stuff the man does. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, I have utmost respect for what Jason does. It is uh, as close to perfection as you can get. And with that, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. And you might want to watch this video right here.